Hi again, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at adding the grab interaction to our VR hands. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are back in Unity. This is uh, where we I left the scene in the last tutorial. All I've done is I've added a little bit of um, color to our environment and just put this table in and added some cubes, which will make more sense in a second. But in this video, I wanna show you how we can go about adding in um, the interaction for grabbing. Um, and to do that, it's actually surprisingly easy. So on our XR rig, you'll notice we have our left hand controller and our right hand controller. Now, in order to grab objects, there's a couple of things we need to add on. Now at the moment on our hands, we've got an XR ray interactor, a line render, and an XR interactor line visual. We can even go ahead and actually remove all of those. So let's click on the dots, remove component, remove component. It's got a dependency, so we'll remove that one first and then remove that one. Now on our hand, we are going to need a XR Direct Interactor that you can see at the bottom of the list there. Go ahead and click that. And in order to pick things up, we're going to need to detect when a collision occurs with the object. So we're going to need um, a sphere collider. So click on Add Component again. We'll add a sphere collider onto our left hand roller object. Add it on there. See, it's massive. We don't want it to be that big because the sphere determines when our hand is in proximity to an object and we don't want to be able to grab it that far away and also it'll also everything would also hover if we have like a hover state everything encompassed within this um, sphere collider would, uh, would activate us on hover so we're going to go ahead and reduce the radius down to something a little bit smaller let's try 1.5 it's probably still a little bit big Let's try 0.08. There's some settings in our direct, XR Direct Interactor that you might want to have a look at in your own time or we can do it in another tutorial, such as attaching to a specific transform. Um, and you've also got some sound events and haptic events um, when we select or hover over certain objects. We're not looking at those today. We're, all we've done is added our XR Direct Interactor and our Sphere Collider onto our hands. Uh, I've already done that for the right hand, so this is all ready to go. And you can see I've got some remnants from the old system, so I can go ahead and remove those. I don't need the line render anymore, so I've got my XR Direct Interactor and the Sphere Collider. So that's our hand set up. These will now detect. Now one important thing that you really must do in order to get this working is on your Sphere Collider, it must be marked as a trigger, not as a normal collider. So check our left hand. You can see here is trigger is off so make sure that's on now to interact with objects and be able to pick them up is also really easy what I'm going to do here is right click in my hierarchy I'm going to create a cube I set on my desk I, I really hope you like my 3d modeling skills we've got a little tiny cube here in order to be able to pick this up in VR is make sure by default it's got a box collider on anyway if we're just using your own models make sure they got a collider on and we want to say XR grab interactable put that component on there it's going to add a rigid body component uh, and then it, it gives you some things you can change here now in a minute I'm going to jump into VR and I'm going to show you um, a particular feature of the movement type because by default you have three options velocity tracking, kinematic and instantaneous and they react differently in the virtual world and we're going to hop into VR in a minute and have a look at those but for our cube we're going to um, just leave it as kinematic if we had any if say this object was a gun with multiple grab points we could um, set this colliders arrays here for, to like whatever we needed and drop the individual colliders in that would activate the grab um, and then what's very useful is these this XR grab interactable also includes interactable events so when you pick it up an event is going to be triggered uh, and it'll do whatever tasks you assign in any event you choose here the track position and smooth position if that's marked um, it makes, I think, 
it makes the object feel like it's heavy. It's got a little bit of lag on there, uh, and the same with rotation. So um, you can make objects give the impression that they're quite heavy. Uh, and then you've got some options for um, throw on detach um, and some gravity on detach as well. So as long as you have on your game object that you want to pick up a box collider, and then as soon as you go ahead and add the XR grab interactable, the rigid body is also going to be assigned. Uh, and that is, I think, just a default rigid body. Use gravity as checks. It is kinematic is off. Uh, and then you've got your default settings there. So now let's hop in into our VR world and have a look at what these three different movement types actually are because um, depending on your game might affect your decision in, in what movement type you choose. So let's jump into VR and take a look. So in this scene you can see we've got our four cubes and we've got the one which we just set up, the grey one, which shows how just adding the XR grab interactor onto a game object will give it the ability be able to pick it up in a virtual world and you can see I just chucked it away there so all the um, physics and the gravity is working well and now I need to show you what the difference is between um, the kinematic velocity and instantaneous movement types are so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach out I'm gonna grab my kinematic and my instantaneous cubes and at the same time hit the microphone and you, as you can see here as you move around the kinematic you can see it, you get a little bit of wobble um, uh, and it, it looks okay. It works perfectly, perfectly acceptable. And then you have the instantaneous, that's a really smooth follow. Now where these are, are different is that with the kinematic, you will get your collision. So I can reach out and move my um, other cube around. I can tap my, tap other game objects in the world and it's gonna react. With the instantaneous one, however, you can see that um, you don't get any collisions or able to pass straight through that kinematic cube, um, the velocity track cube. Um, so that's where these two are different. Now, the velocity track cube is very cool. It, it has a little bit of judder when you move it around, um, but what's quite cool about this one is that it will re react with everything in the world. And as you can see, I'm gonna try and pass it through the desk um, the box instantly stops on the top, but my hand will still travel around and I can kind of manipulate the cube around on the desk and it's going to react to the mesh or the collider on the mesh. As well as interacting with other game objects. You're able to not pass through the cube, kinematic cube. Um, but this one, we will be able to pass it straight through other objects in the scene. So which one you choose for your game is going to be very much up to you. Um, and you might find that you, you need the ability to have the world react to the objects that you're holding, but uh, at the sacrifice of slightly juddery movement, whereas the instantaneous, it might be okay for objects to pass through and just clip different game objects. So. I would definitely recommend just experimenting with what one works for you and um, in which one works best in your game. So that wraps up this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And by now you should have got your VR scene together with your VR camera, added in your hands and now have the ability to pick things up in the virtual world. In the next one, we're gonna take a look at teleportation. I'll see you then.